Speaking of Warhorse, what what was your first inspiration for that book, for writing about the First World War, which no one in children's books was writing about at that time? I think the reason I dared to do it at all, I mean, I've explained a little bit about the um, the way I'd grown up with this atmosphere of war all around me, post-war England. And, but in a sense, I put that to the back of my mind. I was a teacher, primary school, and uh, I did, I had told a lot of stories to the uh, the children in class, year six class it was, uh, never about war at all. I just hadn't gone there. I did write one story called Friend or Foe, mm -hmm. which is a story that my auntie, my auntie Bess, who was a teacher in London, um, evacuated her children from Islington down to Cornwall. And it was a story really of a couple of evacuee uh, children. Um, so that was really because of the stories that she was telling me about her experiences being a teacher. So I'm I thought that would interest the children. I was interested myself in in the way children leave home and family in a very traumatic situation and then are taken to live on a farm, which is supposed to be um, sort of all heavenly and isn't it wonderful, green fields, and, mm -hmm. and actually you just walk into all sorts of other problems of the local children, and yeah. uh, et cetera. So I did that. And I had no intention, really, of writing a book about the First World War, but moved to Devon about 40, 40 plus years ago now, a tiny village, 100 people, and I was told quite soon afterwards there were two or three old men who lived in the village, octogenarians, who um, had been to the First World War. And I met them, I talked to them at the, I know, the village fete or the produce show or something. And then I just met one of them by accident, a chap called Wilf Ellis in the pub one day. And I um, started talking to him and I, I just sort of broached the subject. I, I said, I gather you were in the First World War, Wilf, and he said, he said, yep. He didn't say anything else, which is quite common mm -hmm. um, where I live. People are really sweet and really kind, but talking is not mm -hmm. what they do easily. And so I questioned him a bit, a tiny bit, and I said, uh, how old were you? 19. I was there with horses. And then he just started talking, and he never stopped for an hour and a half, took me down to his cottage, showed me photographs of his pals, some alive, some dead, showed me his trenching tool. He was a man of about 80. And his wife said, um, he's just never talked to me about this stuff at all. So it goes to what you just said before. You don't tell those who are near and dear to you all about these dreadful things. But he was gassed. Uh, he had his life spared by a German soldier who could have bayoneted him and didn't, and he never knew why. And he survived the war and came back and the end, you know, by the time I knew him, he was an antique dealer. And from him, this is what's bizarre, I one day bought a picture um, of a horse in a stable and underneath there was this name, Topthorn. So he was the one who first told me about taking horses to the war. Mm. And then he sold me the picture with the name of Topthorn, which is the name of um, Joey's friend in, in my book. So. Yes, he got it all going, and then it was research. It was ringing up the, the, the um, Imperial War Museum in London and asking them the question about horses. So I said, I, I thought roughly a million men had been lost in the war. How many horses? And the man on the end of the phone said, well, roughly the same. We know about a million horses went, and we know 65,000 came back. So we're talking roughly the same numbers. And then, of course, you were thinking on the end of the phone, well, these horses died. The same way as the men, they died on the wire, they were drowned in the mud, they were machine gunned, they died of disease, and they uh, very often died of depression too. I mean, the horses suffer from all the same things yeah, we suffer yeah. from. And, um, and then it occurred to me, tell a story, not from a French point of view or a British point of view or a German point of view, tell it through the eyes and feelings of a horse who moves from one side to the other. Circumstances, um, the circumstance I invented was it's a farm horse in my village of Iddesley. It grows up on a farm with a young boy and is, um, the army comes to the village at the beginning of the war to buy horses and horses sold away against the boy's wishes. And he follows the horse to France. And uh, in France, the horse is captured by the Germans, so lives the war partly with British soldiers, mm -hmm. partly with German soldiers and then also winters on a French farm. So you see the war from other points of view besides one side. So it's a story of the universal suffering of war, which is what I'd come to realize was the important thing to focus on.